of your bones support. Imagine niyo kung walang buto. And then gravity pulls uh, on uh, on your weight, no? Uh, then wala man sa support so para kayo jelly ace or jelly push. Um, in so many things, the bone supports the body biomechanical. Ang nangyayari dyan, uh, meron pa ang uh, complex na interaction yung timbang na dinadala ng buto and how thick or how strong the bones are. So for example, in a patient who is obese, yung malaki yung katawan, the kataba or in a patient who is body building, uh, malaki yung muscle mass, the bones will also compensate by become thicker, by becoming larger. Okay? So that's for the function of support. For protection, gusto kong ma-appreciate ninyo na yung pagkakagawa ni God sa katawan is so ingenious na yung mga major viscera or organs ng katawan essential for life like the brain, the heart, the lungs, uh, the genital urinary tract, uh, bladder, sacral, yung ovaries, yung uterus, sa females, yung sigmoid colon, at saka yung rectum, sa distal gastrointestinal tract, those important organs are surrounded by flat bones para mayroong protection sa kanila. So, if, if you can imagine kung walang skull, konting sundot mo lang sa ulo ng isang patient, may trauma na agad yung utak niya. So, appreciate that, that the critical organs have flat bones or bones covering them. Heart. Yung heart na sa midline, kinocover siya ng flat bone na nandito, uh, which is the sternum. No? So movement, yung um, bones, doon nag-a-attach yung muscle. And whenever the muscle will contract or shorten, it will pull on the bone and cause movement of that entire limb or part of the torso. No? Okay. Storage. Ang nasa store sa bones, maraming bagay, but in general, those will be the inorganic elements, particularly calcium. So, lahat ng calcium na nasa isang organism, almost 97 to 99% of that nandun sa buto. 1% to 3% lang ang nasa circulate uh, through the blood and the plasma, or that yung nasa loob ng mga cells. Okay? So, konti lang, minority lang yun. Um, all the rest, nakastore sa buto. And those will be mobilized. Uh, gagalawin siya, gagamitin siya, marirelease siya mula sa buto. Kapag bumaba ng level na 1%, 2%. Next would be hematopoiesis. So, sa gitna ng buto, yung bulalo, no? Kapag tumakain kayo ng bulalo, yung bulalo na yun, um, originally, uh, yung function niya is to create blood cells. So, it is also that portion of the bone, the bone marrow, that uh, allows the organism to make blood cells. Red blood cells for carrying oxygen, white blood cells for immunity and protection. So, yung, ano na yan, yung last function na to, later na natin pwede discuss kasi uh, kailangan niya ng separate topic of its own. Okay? So, functions of the bones, nasa book nito, di ba? Support, protection, movement, storage, and making of red blood cells and white blood cells. And platelets. So, um, what's special about uh, hematopoiesis is that magkakaiba yung uh, organ of the body na gumagawa ng blood cells based on the age of uh, the patient or the organism. 
nung embryo pa siya at saka ng fetus, nasa loob pa ng siya ng nanay, yung gumagawa ng blood cells ay ang liver at ang spleen. Nung naanak na siya, yung gumagawa ng blood cells na yung puto na. The long bones and the flat bones. Then kapag tumatanda na yung bata, yung flat bone na lang, hindi na na nagpa-participate yung uh, long bone sa hematopoiesis. Okay? So as you grow older, flat bones na lang talaga yung participate So that kapag meron ka sakit uh, in the blood, and you want really to investigate what's the cause of this blood disorder, kung wala ka nang mahanap na iba, wala ka nang clue na makuha, pwede mong i bone marrow biopsy ng patient sa flat bones. For example, dito sa ilio, kung nasaan yung pelvic bone mo, uh, there's a bone there that we call the ilium. Ipusokin mo yan, then pukunin mo yung bulalok nun. Yun yung titingan mo under the microscope. Okay? Sige. So, grossly, ibig sabihin ng term na gross, uh, use only your naked eye. So, pag po mo nung buto, titingan mo, that's gross examination. Um, grossly, we have two uh, types of bone based on how they look. Pampak bone at saka yung spongy bone. Kapag... Oh, Jason! Ano mo? Ano mo? Report ka! Ha? Report ka naman eh. Hindi, nag-ano ako. Nag-tutor ako. Nag-tutor ako? Oo. Oh. Ah, so recorded? Oo. Oh. Yung kapata mo? Oo. Oh, so May mga kids din. Ano? May mga kids din. Mga bata. Sa college? Oo. Oh. Ano ba ito pinuturo mo? Anatomy and Physiology. Ah, ano ito? Official ba ito? Okay. Ang Physiology. Enjoy. Tinuro ko lang ang brain stem. Yes, yeah, sorry naman. Brain stem. <laughs> Pang smart man yan, Dok. Ha? Pang smart lang. <laughs> so, balik tayo. Sorry, ha? Na-distract ako, guys. <laughs> Yun, yun, yun naman yung mga distractions ko, yung mga kasama ko dito. <laughs> yun si Doc Jason, isa siyang cardiologist. So, grossly, we have compact bone and spongy bone. Yung compact bone, pag tinignan mo, bends, ibig sabihin walang spaces in between the bone. So, kapag spongy bone, parang siyang sponge, may parang cork sponge. May spaces in between. So yan, kita naman. Yan yung mga spaces in between ng spongy bone. And ito yung compact bone na very dense, smooth, and homogeneous. So, ang ano dito, uh, based on the amount of stress that they can carry, of course, mas matiba yung compact bone. No? It can carry a lot more of uh, weight. Kasi dense na siya. Dikit-dikit yung uh, pagkakagawa ng uh, extracellular nutrients. But what's special, again, isang uh, special way that God designed the bones is mapapansin nyo sa isang buto, there will be uh, mixtures of the teeth. Compact bone and spongy bone. And ang purpose nun would be yung compact bone will allow that particular bone to carry weight. And the spongy bone will be there so that yung bone na yun magaan. Kasi imagine mo, kapag compact bone ng lahat, mabigat. Remember that one property of bone is that it is both strong and light. Yung pagiging magaan ng bone is due to spongy bone. Pero may mga species. Bali, gumaan siya kasi may ano, natanggalan siya ng pass. So, uh, okay. 
yung image na yan ng uh, spongy bone, nagiging ganyan yung compact bone whenever a patient has osteoporosis. So kung iisipin mo, kung ganyan na yung buto niya, konting ano lang, matumba lang yung patient or tumama lang siya ng malapas sa door or sa wall, makapracture na siya. No? Kaya uh, we really have to be aware that some of our patients, especially yan sa butika, yung mga matatanda na nagtetake ng diuretics, no? uh, yung mga nagtetake ng uh, some antihypertensives and some steroids, they will have these no? nagkaka uh, osteoporosis. Okay? So again, two forms of bone as we look at them grossly compact bone, dense, spongy bone, porous. Ibig sabihin may mga butas-butas. So base naman, kapasok. Okay. So, ito yung human skeleton, di ba? So, uh, sa human skeleton, maraming uh, klase or forms ng buto. And based on these forms, you can also classify the different bones. So, long bones, mahaba, and we usually find them in the appendicular skeleton. Sa mga periphery. We have flat bones. Sabi ko kanina, ito yung sternum. Flat bone din yung skull. Yan. And flat bone yan. Yung mandible, that's flat. Ito makapansin nyo. Yung facial bones, most of them are flat. Ito, yung pelvis. That's flat bone. Okay. Uh, next, short bone. Yung short bone, usually makikita natin siya sa uh, distal portion ng ating appendicular skeleton. So, yung sa toes, ito sa tarsal bones, yung sa ankle, tsaka carpal bones, ito nasa wrist. Those are short bones. Kasi, yun, given naman short siya na, it does not have a long axis. No? Or yung long axis niya, hindi long, or short. Irregular bone, <laughs> Ano ba yan? Pati yun in-explain ko. Anloyin ko talaga. Irregular bone, uh, hindi mo siya mawari kung saan siya. Kasi weird talaga yung shape niya. And an example of that would be the vertebra. Ito, which make up the spinal column. Yan. Titingnan nyo. Meron siyang parang chopping board sa gitna. Tapos meron siyang mga tusok-tusok sa likod. So, saan, saan mo siya ika-classify? Mahirap siya ika-classify. Kaya siya irregular. Irregular na lang. Okay. Na-describe ko na kanina na sa skeleton natin, we have two. No? Two primary uh, uh, ano tayo, ways of looking at them. So, meron tayong eight-shell skeleton. Ibig sabihin ng eight-shell skeleton, nasa gitna siya. So, midline. So, kasama dyan yung skull, yung uh, spinal column, tsaka yung pelvis, tsaka itong thoracic or rib cage. Yan. Nasa gitna kasi siya, kaya siya H-shell skeleton. Uh, yung nasa gilid, on the periphery, uh, we call that the appendicular skeleton. Appendicular skeleton. Okay. So if you take a closer look at the long bone, meron tayong parts pa ng long bone. Uh, yung gitna na part ng long bone, we call that the diathesis. Okay? Gitna na part, diathesis. Yung dulo na part, we call that the epiphysis. Epi means on top. So yan, kung babalik ka rin mo yan, 
right? It's still on top. No? So yung dulo na part, epi, we call it epiphysis, yung gitna, diaphysis. In between the two, the epiphysis and the diaphysis, especially here, yan, yung region na yan, that's what we call the metaphysis. Pero wala dito, metaphysis ang tawag ko. Metaphysis. So, kung makikita nyo, ito na yung sinabi ko, in one bone, we'll find a mixture of both compact bone and spongy bone. So yung compact bone, makikita niyan, nasa periphery siya, oh, nasa uh, edges. Um, ibig sabihin, itong bone region na to, this will be strong kasi mayroong compact bone. But at the same time, mayroon siyang spongy bone sa gitna. So, even if this is strong, it is not heavy. Kasi merong spaces. Um, and merong study na sa ano yun, sa biomechanics. No? Uh, it's a special form of uh, knowledge kung saan tinetest nila kung ano yung mga properties ng mga bagay-bagay sa katawan. Kung yung buto daw, yung pagkakagawa sa kanya, compact bone lang siya lahat wala siyang spongy bone, yung distribution of force will be less efficient so that mas magpa-fracture siya. Can you imagine? Kung meron siyang spongy bone, nag-apply ka dito ng force, example, may force dyan, tsak, madi-distribute yan, dahil may mga ano siya eh, may mga ridges pa rin siya at saka spaces. So madi-distribute siya more efficiently than if wala ito. So, actually, the spongy bone, even if it is porous, will uh, prevent fractures. But if it is very porous na, lahat na lang maging porous, then prone ka na sa fracture. Okay. So, makikita niya din dito na yung long bone natin, meron siyang space sa gitna, and this is what we call the medullary cavity. Okay? Cavity, pag nakita mo yung term na cavity, ibig sabihin, hollow space. So, the medullary cavity is where we will find the bone marrow. So, sa long bones, yellow marrow na yung makikita mo ito. Yung bulalok niya, yellow na. But originally, when uh, we were young, and when uh, we were still uh, fetuses, this is red bone marrow. Red bone marrow, contains special stem cells that have the capacity to become anything. You know? But generally, those stem cells will become blood cells. You red bone marrow, eventually, the cells there will die off and the space becomes empty. So, mawawala na ito. May excavate na siya. Magiging free space na ito. At yung papalit sa kanya, taba na lang. No? Kapag matanda na tayo, taba na na yung makikita. Okay? Okay. Okay. Yun, na-distract na naman ako. Okay. So, yung buto natin, meron siyang covering outside and meron din siyang covering 
inside. Okay? So that's how special it is. No? Yung covering niya outside, we call that the periostrum. So let's break down the word now. Ostrum, yan. Ibig sabihin yan, bone. Peri means around. So periostrum means around the bone. It is the chayong covering around the bone. Um, yung periostrum, it is uh, tough na. No? Pag binanat-banat mo siya, pwede siyang mag-tear, pwede pa rin siyang uh, ma-destroy, but relatively, ano na siya? Meron na siyang na-offer na tensile strength. So, what's special here is that the periostrum, yan, nakadikit siya sa cortical bone, Ibig sabihin ng cortical, yung nasa outside na portion ng bone, no? yung outermost. Nakadikit siya kung papansin niyo may mga hibla-hibla na nagko-connect sa dalawa. Kapag nag-opera sa orthopedics, opera ka na, kita mo na yung buto. Pag pinil off mo itong periostrum, maririnig mo literally na papap Ibig sabihin na parang nate-tear away yung periostrum from the bone. Okay? So, yung mga nagpapap na yun, yung nagbilikit sa dalawa, that, that's uh, what we call sharpies fibers. Okay? So, yung periostrum, it's special because it helps remodel the bone. So, pwede niyang pakapalit ang bone mismo kahit hindi siya part ng bone. You know? So, nas, nandun kasi sa periosteum yung cells na nagdadagdag yung bone. Okay? And yung periosteum is also important in healing uh, the bone. For example, nagka-fracture ka. Isang very important na aspect na mag-opera ng isang may fracture would be to preserve the periosteum, keep it healthy. Kasi nandun sa periosteum magdagaling yung healing ng mga molecules yung yung nagpapa-repair dun sa fracture. Okay? As well as the as part of the nutrition comes from the periosteum. Kung sa labas may covering, meron din covering sa loob. And we call that the endosteum. So osteum means bone. And endo means inside. So etong endosteum naman, if you look at it under the microscope, you architecture niya more like blood vessel. Ito more like ano siya, parang balak, no? Konte. Uh, but ito, yung endosteum, para siya layer or wall ng blood vessel. So treat it as if it is a big blood vessel. No? Yung endosteum. Um, yung endosteum yung special dyan dyan yung parang bahay ng mga hematopoietic stem cells no? so dyan sila nagtatago dyan sila na survive no? dyan sila nakikinteract with the environment yung stem cells okay kita niyo yung bulalok sa gitna Okay. Daming anatomy. Yun lang natin to, no? This is a cross section of uh, the bone. So cross section means kung ito yung long axis pinutol ko siyang pagano'n. Pag longitudinal section pa no? Along the long axis. So what's special here again is the periosteum. Look at it lang. No? Nakadikit siya into the cortical layer of the bone through uh, Sharpie's fibers. Yan. Uh, makikita niyo din na sa periosteum, maraming blood vessel and nerves. Actually, yung pain from a fracture, minority lang na ang galing sa bone itself. And majority na galing sa uh, sensation of pain from the periosteum. Dahil nasa-stretch 
or na tear yung periosteum, yun yung sobrang sakit. Ito, masakit konti kasi may nerves din naman, pero mas masakit talaga. Ito yung pinanggagaling na sakit. So, whenever we inject morphine to a patient who has had a fracture, kasi of course, yung fracture, for example, na, na ganyan yung buto niya, it is na ganyan, no? naging ganyan, ibabalik mo kasi siyang pagano'n. So, from that, ipopull mo siyang maging ganun. So, bibigyan mo yun ng morphine patient or pain reliever, you inject it in hopes of um, preventing sensation from the nerves coming from here. Okay? So, next, ano pa yung special dito? Uh, even if this is already compact bone, yan, compact bone naman talaga yun. Meron siya mga trabeculations. Trabeculations means there are ridges and spaces na nagsasabay sa mga. Uh, para ma-imagine nyo siya, imagine nyo yung nakakita na ba kayo na ano, yung melon? Hindi yung watermelon, ha? yung melon na ginagawang shake. Di ba? If you look at it closely, merong mga patterns yung balat ng melon. No? Na-imagine nyo ba? Ganun yung trabeculations. So, dito, sa buto, meron din ganun, may trabeculations din. And in the spaces of the trabeculations, doon nagpe-penetrate yung mga blood vessels. Nakikita niya naman. You know? Papasok siya, tapos yung mga spaces ng trabeculations, nandun yung mga blood vessels. So that the bone as a whole is actually very vascular. You know? Kahit tingnan mo siya, parang buto lang naman siya, pero pag binrate mo yung bone, a lot of blood can be lost from the patient dahil sobrang daming blood vessels sa loob ng buto. Okay? So that kapag mayroong trauma, no, na-fracture yung patient, yung long bone ng patient, na bali talaga, dumutubo siya, you can lose or you can estimate at least one liter of blood loss per fracture sa long bone. Imagine niyo yun, yung isang buong tao, five liters lang yung dugot niya. But if meron siyang fracture sa long bone, one liter loss na automatic. No? Estimate natin. Here you will also notice the osteon or the haversian system. No? Other name ng osteon, is the haversian system. The haversian system, ibig sabihin lang yan, you have the space, no? Yan, the haversian canal. Tapos sa loob ng canal, mayroong blood vessel and nerve. May artery, supplying oxygen-rich blood to the bone. Then mayroong vein, removing the waste products of the bone, as well as the resorbed calcium. Tapos mayroong din nerve. Okay? And then surrounding the neurovascular structures, yung parang tree rings, kapag pinutol mo yung pahoy, meron siyang rings, di ba? Di ba, magbibil na ka ilang years na yung puno based that. Um, dito may ganun din. So, itong mga rings nito, these are collections of um, osteocytes, no? mga bone cells. Yung kada yellow dyan, Isang lakuna, yan siya. Lakuna means a space um, that is filled with a cell. So, kada yellow dyan, around the ring is a lakuna. Within each lakuna is an osteocyte that comes from an osteoblast. Okay. So, ganyan siya. Yun yung, ano, then, dahan-dahan, lumalaki yung buto when these cells deposit bone outside of it, no? deposit the extracellular nutrients. Ah, haba nun, no? So, yan, tingnan nyo. Yung isang aversion system is this one. May bone siya around it. And then yung bone na yan, ang gumawa niya, yung cell na nandito sa lakuna yung nasa yun. Okay? Then, meron na naman siya next group of cells Therefore, producing the next layer, bone. Another layer, bone. So, dahil patong-patong siya, malakas talaga yung bone. 
kaya niyang experimentalize na kasi. Okay. So we have the cells in the bone. Yung gusto ko lang i ano sa inyo, i emphasize sa inyo. In almost um, all aspects of anatomy as we discuss the organ systems, meron kayong cell and meron kayong material around the cell. No? So dito din sa buto ganun din. Meron kayong cell, then meron kayong material around the cell. So yung cell na nagde-deposit ng bone, no? nagde-deposit ng extracellular matrix is the osteoblast. Okay? Pag nakita niyo yung osteo, ibig sabihin, buto, bone. Blast means a cell that creates a lot of extracellular matrix. Okay? So yun yung um, primary unit dito sa bone. Yeah. The osteoblast secreting bone, which is the matrix. Okay? Extracellular matrix. Yung pinanggalingan ng osteoblast ay ang osteoprogenitor cell. Ayan. Okay? So ito, this is still immature. And once it matures, it becomes an osteoblast. If it is still immature, it is still a progenitor cell. Yung ginagawa niya matrix rich in collagen pa. Okay? Rich in organic material pa. Collagen and elastin. But once it becomes more developed, naging osteoblast na siya. It, be, it, now, de, it now deposits doon sa matrix in organic material. So sa simula, uh, collagen pa lang, and then kapag Tumanda na siya, pwede na siyang magdagdag ng calcium doon sa collagen. And yung dinadagdag niyang calcium, yun yung nagiging bone matrix. Okay? Yun na yung nagiging bone mismo. Um, the next kind of cell, kabalik tara naman. Kung itong dalawa, nagde-deposit ng bone, eto kumakain ng bone. And kailangan mo kainin yung bone kasi it is by that way kinain mo yung deposit mo, that you are able to uh, take again the calcium that you deposited and give it back to the circulation. Give it back to the blood so that the other cells of the body can use the calcium. Okay? So, uh, if we look at a schematic representation, ganito siya, cross-section ng bone. Sa picture na to meron kang osteoblasts. Ibig sabihin, gumagawa yan ng bone. Then, meron kang osteoclast na kumakain ng bone. Then, dito, integrated yung blood vessel. So, ganito yung nangyayari. At saka yung mga, yan, yung mga, ano bang kulay yan, pink na dots. That's the matrix itself. That's the bone itself. Okay? So, Okay, so the osteoblasts will deposit the bone um, around it. No? So ito, sa fibrous periosteum, ito yung dinisess natin na covering kanina, sa ilalim niya, immediately, mayroong layer ng osteoblasts. So ibig sabihin nun, sa ilalim niyan, nagde-deposit na ng bone. So can you imagine, if this is my periosteum and then this is the cortical bone, yung mga osteoblasts na sa ilalim, if magde-deposit sila ng buto, patapal siya. No? So yung periosteum will um, allow the bone to become thicker no? as it deposits bone. Another important uh, relationship, no? sobrang ingenious ng pagkakagawa ng ating katawan is that meron kang unit dito. 
meron kang nagde-deposit ng bone, meron kang kumakain ng bone, and they are um, in close proximity to a blood vessel. So for example, marami kang uh, available calcium sa blood, kukunin ng osteoblast yung calcium na yun at ide-deposit niya dito sa matrix. Um, if you meet the appropriate signals. No? But on the other way around, if kumukonte yung calcium sa blood, there will be release of signals again that we will discuss in endocrinology. Those signals will now tell the osteoclasts to take bone, so kakain niya yung bone, at i-release niya pabalik sa blood vessel. So that the uh, systemic circulation will have calcium that it can be okay. Next concept is ossification. Uh, paano ba nagde-deposit yung ating katawan ng buto? No? Ossification means the making of bone. Masahin lang natin ito. In the embryo, bone cells will come together and slowly start making bone. So imagine niyo yung sperm at yung egg cell nag-meet, naging isang cell. Nag-divide, nag-divide, nag-divide. Naging zygote, naging uh, blastocyst, naging morula, then naging embryo. So meron ka ng pumpul, isang bilog ka na ng cells. Sa bilog na yun ng cells, meron mga special cells na magiging bone cells from that clump of cells. The bone cells na yun will come together and they will start depositing bone. Siya yun na yung magiging skeleton ng organism. As that organism develops. Okay? So, paano yun? Itong pinakita natin sa picture is endochondral ossification. So, ito sa simula, cartilage lang. So yung cartilage, para siya yung uh, uh, skeleton ng pina ng ear. Ito. Yan yung cartilage. So sa baby, no, sa fetus, ganyan lang muna sa simula. And then dahan-dahan niya, madedepositan ng bone. So yun mo to, wala pang bone dyan, no And then may nag-invade or nag-infiltrate ng mga progenitor cells. Yan. And then start na, nagde-deposit na siya ng buto within the cartilage. Kaya siya endochondral ossification. And then, magiging buto na siya. Pagtandaan niya talaga. Okay? Okay. Kanina, diniscuss natin pahapiyaw lang. Ibig sabihin, surface discussion lang. Yung intramembranous ossification. Ang sinabi kong kumakapal, yung buto, yung intramembranous ossification. Let's now go to relationships. Uh, not that kind, no? but the relationships of uh, muscle uh, with other uh, structures of the muscular system, musculoskeletal system. So you have here, the muscles will attach to the bone through tendons, and when the muscles shorten, they will pull on the bone no? and produce gross movement of the body part. For example, etong forearm ko, meron akong muscle dito. No? And then, yung tendon niya, dadaan dito, at dito sa palm, mag-i-insert. So whenever the muscle will pull, mag-shorten yung muscle dito sa so forearm, when it shortens, it will pull on the tendon and cause my wrist to flex. From understandable na yun. So that is how movement is produced. If walang buto, wala siyang kakapitan at wala siyang ipupull. Okay? So bones, when they attach to other bones, it is through ligaments. And if this attachment involves a joint, an angle of movement of those. For example, that the synovial joint. So, ito yung mga klase ng joints. 
joints um, can be fibrous. For example, yan, kagaya ng sa skull. These are sutures only. So, parang semento lang yan, na connective tissue, na nagdikit ng dalawang bone. But here, in the forearm, uh, ito yung forearm bones natin. So you have the radius and the ulna. And uh, these two are connected by an interosseous membrane. So dahil yung membrane na yan, mahaba-haba siya, it can fold on top of each other or under. No? Kaya pwede mong pronate and supinate yung forearm. Pwede mo siyang iganun. Kasi yung buto, pag gumagalaw siya, pwede siyang gumagalaw. Pwede siyang gumagalaw. Dahil mahaba-haba yun. So tawag natin sa connection na to would be a syndesmosis. And here, you will find yung joint. Common uh, joint. Uh, the synovial joint. No? Uh, yung synovial joints usually nag-offer siya dito sa mga portions ng katawan na nabibend or nabibend. Pansin niya. So, the joint is basically all of this. You have the proximal bone and the distal bone. And then, in between them, para hindi sila magpiskisan, no? so hindi sila magasgas at maubos, merong uh, articulating cartilage no? or articular cartilage. Yeah. So, kapag manggasgasan sila or if there is pressure from the top, the cartilage will dissipate the pressure. So, hindi masisira yung bone sa ilalim. Okay? If, for example, in osteoarthritis, nawawala ito, so, nakikis-kisan nila yung mga buto. Okay? Uh, here is a space. This is the synovial cavity or the joint cavity. This is filled with fluid that uh, will make the surfaces inside slippery. So, para siyang lubrication. Kami sa Ruma, tutusokin namin. So, may kami needle, tutusok namin dito. Then, kukunin namin yung fluid. Then, titignan namin under the microscope. And that will tell us the type of arthritis of the patient. Okay? So, uh, ano pa ba? Ito, synovial membrane. Siya yung gumagawa ng fluid. Okay, so that's the joint. Patapos na tayo. Yes na. Gusto niyo pa bang mag-break o diretso na? Diretso na, kaya niyo pa, di ba? Kaya pa. Smart naman yung mga taga-SPC. Eh. Okay, basahin lang natin. The bones hold almost all of the body sculpture. A little bit of that calcium is present in the blood and in the circulation. So, yung calcium na andun sa circulation, that is what is used by the different cells of the body. So, for example, calcium, kinukuha siya ng skeletal muscle or ng muscle cell, and it will allow contraction. Calcium, kinukuha siya ng neurons and that calcium will allow the neuron to release its neurotransmitters. Okay? Calcium is utilized by all cells of the body during metabolism. So for example, um, yung metabolic pathway that allows the cells to use glucose to release energy, no? breaks down the glucose to, to produce ATP. The enzymes that allow the pathway, the mga enzymes na metabolic pathway na yun, some of them will use calcium. So if walang calcium, hindi sila ma-activate. Uh, ano pa? Uh, calcium is also used by the cells when it wants to undergo cell suicide or apoptosis. So, ibig sabihin nun, no?
And guys, magpugas daw ng kamay at mag-wear daw ng mask. Okay. So, uh, that calcium will uh, uh, signal within the cell na kailangan niya nang mamatay. So, that is a death signal. Dito. So, maraming functions of calcium. Kaya, uh, kailangan maintain siya in appropriate levels. So, kapag sobra, mahirap. Kapag kulang, may problema ka din, mahirap din. Kaya meron tayong mga mechanisms sa loob ng human body. Imagine niyo sobrang complex nito. But it happens um, because of the design that is really amazing. So, uh, we have three processes that maintain calcium. Absorption by the gut. So, from the food that you eat or the drink that uh, you drink, mga calcium do, absorption ng gastrointestinal tract and the calcium will reach the blood. Um, absorption and resorption by the bone. Yung calcium na nasa bone, uh, nasa blood, kukunin siya ng osteoblast, ilalagay na sa bone. Kung yung calcium naman sa blood, mababa, kakainin ng osteoplast yung bone at ibibigay niya yung calcium sa blood. Okay. Lastly, we have elimination and reabsorption din. Kung sobra yung calcium sa blood, iiihi siya ng kidney. Okay. Kung kulang naman yung calcium sa blood, pupunin niya yung nasa ihi, ibabalik niya sa dugo. Okay. So, ganun na siya. Pero hindi lang yung ganun-ganun na mahirap yung mess. Not for us to discuss right now. The future na lang kung na-encounter yung siya, pwede na kayo na kami. Okay. So ito yung sinabi ko. And all of those mechanisms, the goal is to maintain a constant level of calcium. And these are orchestrated by the parathyroid gland and the parathyroid gland. interact yung tatlo. For example, meron kang sakit sa kidney, pwede kang magkasakit sa buto dahil doon. Okay? Meron kang sakit sa buto, magkakasakit ka sa kidney dahil sa function. Okay? And ito, this is my last slide. This is how the osteoclast eats the extracellular matrix so that it can get the calcium there and transport it into the blood. Okay? So, first, ang magsasabi sa osteoclast na kailangan niya ng kumain ng calcium or kumain ng buto to increase the calcium is parathyroid hormone. Si parathyroid hormone, masesecrete siya kapag mababa yung calcium. Okay, so, Logical naman, pag na-release yung parathyroid hormone, ma-activate yung osteoclast, tataas yung calcium, ma-reverse yung abnormality. Di ba? That's how unique it is. No? So yung parathyroid hormone, i-recognize siya ng osteoblast. O yung osteoblast, in response to parathyroid hormone, will release rank L and macrophage colon stimulator. So, advance yan konti, but you will encounter that in pharmacology, kaya alam niya na natin dito. No? So, that will tell the progenitors of osteoclasts to become osteoclasts. Sige, maging osteoclast na kayo, kasi meron ng signal, go ahead, become osteoclast. Parang ganun siya. Pag naging osteoclast na sila, they become activated. Para silang gagawa ng tripod. No? So it will form a seal. So na, alam nyo ba yung, ano, yung parang suction na dinidikit sa uh, windshield tapos dun ka magsasabit ng mga stuff toy? Yung ganon? Parang ganon. No? But this time in uh, the bone, no? on the surface of the bone. So yan, sealed na yung area na yan. No? Itong area to, this is already sealed. And when it is already sealed, 
mag-release na yung osteoclast ng digestive enzymes here to destroy the collagen that is in the bone matrix. So kapag nasira na yung collagen at saka yung mga organic fibers, the calcium phosphate, the inorganic material, will now become available. No? So nag-gets na yung process na yun. Sa simula, sequestered pa yung calcium. Um, Naka-embed pa siya. So nung sinira na yung mga nets kung saan siya naka-embed, it becomes free calcium. And this time, acid will then be secret, secreted para mag-dissociate yung calcium with its salt. Then it becomes free calcium. It will be absorbed, taken up with the osteoclast, and pumped into the extracellular fluid. At babalik na siya sa dugo yung calcium. So that's how uh, unique this process is. So, can you imagine na meron tayong mga gamot that will affect all of this? You know? So, that's for you to uncover during your pharmacology. Kailan ba yan? Second year or third year?